Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today in this video, we will be covering the main difference between Spring and Spring Boot. Now, this is one of the very important TV question and you should know the basic why if Spring was already there in the market out there, why Spring Boot was, was really necessary. So, let's get started. The difference between Spring and Spring Boot is the first, where it is used. So, Spring was lightweight open source framework widely used to develop an enterprise level application. Now, Spring Boot was built upon the convention Spring Framework. So, the, the Spring is old. Spring Boot is relatively new. So, Spring Boot was built upon the Spring Framework, which also, as usual, since it was uh, developing the enterprise application, Spring Boot was, is also developing enterprise application. But strictly, it was for the creation of REST APIs and CRUDs, so that to make our life, the developer's life, easy. That is why Spring Boot came into picture. Now, why? So, why it came into picture? Now, Spring was an old age technology, but it came in picture to create a loosely coupled application. So, before Spring came into picture, we struggled with tightly coupled objects. So, what we used to do was, we used to create objects with new keyword, which created a tight coupled dependency between two objects. So, suppose there's an employee object, there has a dependency of address object. So, what you used to do in employee, address ADD equals to new address, which creates a tight coupling. If employee is garbage collected, address is also garbage collected, which was a problem. To remove this problem, a solution came which was named as Spring. So, it came up with a new concept called as dependency injection, where the task of creation and managing the uh, objects was given to Spring. You don't have to create an object with new. You just ask for it, auto-wire it, and Spring container will give that to you. So, that is why Spring came into picture. Now, if Spring is so successful, it is so good, why Spring Boot? So, since we developers are lazy developers, we need something really quick. We need to do everything really quick. So, that was rapid application development model. With Spring, you have to add the jars. You have to add all its dependencies. With Spring Boot, it reduces all those efforts with the starters. We will see the starter dependency in some seconds. But Spring Boot came into picture to reduce your time to market. So, there is a client standing on your head. He wants that in 14 days, give me a small model which depicts what you are going to create in next few months or years. So, for that, Spring Boot came into picture for us. Next, the server configuration. So, initially for the Spring applications, we always need to uh, explicitly configure the servers. Be it a web sphere from IBM, be it a Tomcat, you have to explicitly configure it. But Spring Boot, as, a, as said, developers are lazy developers. They have created a configuration. Use it. You don't need anything else. So, Spring Boot came with embedded servers, servers such as Tomcat and Jetty. So, the default one is Tomcat. But if you want to change it, you can exclude it from the web server starter and include the Jetty dependency. I have shown this to you in the previous Spring Boot video. So, we had already covered some Spring Boot interview questions. In that, I have already shown you how to remove the exclude the dependency of Tomcat from the web starter of Spring Boot and add a dependency of Jetty to include Jetty and remove the default configuration of Tomcat. Now, the boilerplate code. So, this is the very big reason why Spring came into picture. We are the lazy developers. We don't want to write a lot of code again and again. So, what we did is we did everything in a, we, we, we coded everything, we merged it into a, or compressed it into a jar and we added it to the starter dependency packages. And then the, all the task that is to be repeated again and again is already there in the jars. You just have to use it. So, it reduces the boilerplate code while the spring, the spring applications, we have to write a lot of white boilerplate codes, which was removed in Spring Boot. A very important difference between Spring and Spring Boot is it does not provide an in-memory database like H2 database. Now, you'll ask me why, why is it actually necessary? Why, why, why do you really need an H2 database which is given by Spring Boot? So, in-memory database relies on system memory rather than the hard disk or the disk space of the data. Now, when you used to store the data in the disk space, it is slower to access while when it is stored in the real memory the ma main memory it is quick to access we know we know that right the primary memory is the system memory we it's it's quick to access so the memory access is faster in storage system memory rather than the storage disk space so we need to use this in memory database when we do not need to persist data 
So currently in all of our um, videos, we always use the MySQL database or Oracle ones or in the upcoming, we have also seen the Cosmos DBs in the Azure or all such kinds of database. So these database are such database which are stored in the disk space. And that is why it is persisted in the disk space, in the hard disk or some area in the storage space in your system. So even if your system or the application stops running, the data is still there in the hard disk. You can still connect your database from your application and you will be able to see all the data that you have persisted in the hard disk. But that is not the case in the system memory. It is a volatile memory. So as soon as you restart your application, all the data stored in the system memory is lost as soon as the application restarts. So that is why when you just want to test something or you want to store some data only until your application is up and running and after that you don't need that data. So just throw it away. Now you can, you have benefit of two. You don't have to uh, waste your memory by storing that data and you don't have to wait for a longer time to access the data. It is faster and it is volatile. So as soon as your application stops, the data is removed, your memory is also not wasted and even it is faster because it is the main memory. This was given by Spring Boot as a boon to us developers which was not there in Spring. Next, the dependencies. The Spring framework requires a lot of dependencies to create a web application. Like I have already told you that for single creating a web application, you need tens left and tens and many, many jars. Now you have to explicitly as all 10 of uh, jars explicitly using the build path, which is not the case with the Spring Boot. Spring Boot comes with a handy thing. What is that handy thing called? Starter dependency. So starter dependency is nothing but a package. It is a package of multiple jars. So just by including one dependency, a starter web dependency in the pom.xml, all the required dependency is found from the internet and is loaded into your applications or the M2 folder. So that is it. This is so simple. Spring Boot makes our life so simple. Otherwise, what you would have done, you would have forgot one jar and then your application don't run. It gives you an error. So you keep on forgetting, your application keeps on delaying, getting started. And hence, at the end, your time to market becomes slow because we are prone to human errors. That is why Spring Boot gives everything in one package. Use it and you're good to go. Same as with Spring Security, I've told you in the Spring Security interview question also. In Spring, we had to add all those jars in the build path. So there is tens and hundreds of jars that you need to make your Spring Security up and running. It is difficult. But in Spring Boot, just add Spring Boot Starter Web or Spring Boot Starter Security. And you're good to go. Just with one dependency in Pomo.xml, all the required jars are added to your system and you are up and running with the security. And the main page, when as, as soon as you start your application on localhost, the front page comes with a user and username and password. Without that, you will not be able to enter into your application. That's the beauty of Spring Boot. With just one dependency, you are good with the Spring security implementation in your application. Next, XML configurations. Yes, Spring requires a lot of XML configuration. I've told you in Spring interview questions when we were covering. We needed XML configurations a lot. While in Spring Boot, it is all removed. Now, our important part, plugin. Spring does not provide any plugin to build your application. So, there is a Maven, Gradle, etc. These plugins is required to build your application. It is not provided by Spring, but in Spring Boot, you can always add these plugins as the build plugins in your pom.xml, including the executable jars and variety of features. So this is a very important part that was added in Spring Boot, which was not there in Spring. Now, a very important question I want to cover is dependencies and uh, plugins. So how, what is their role in pom.xml? So understanding the pom.xml. If you want me to cover that, you have to let me know in the comment section. Though Then only I'll cover this pom.xml configurations. What is dependency? What is plugins? What is build? What Many things. So you have to let me know in the comment section. Thank you.